in this video, I'm gonna be talking about M42 lenses, which are very budget-friendly vintage lenses that you can use with an adapter on your Sony a6000. Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowen Photography. On this channel, I do portrait photography tutorials and gear reviews like this. Now, if you're looking for budget-friendly lenses for your mirrorless camera like the Sony a6000, then it's worth looking into M42 lenses. Now, the M42 lens mount was popular amongst Eastern European cameras from around 1949 up until the 1980s. It was common on old Pentacon and Practica cameras, and it was also used on some Pentax cameras like the Spotmatic. Now, M42 lenses are one of the best kept secrets in the vintage lens world. M42 lenses were mass produced, so there are tons of different lenses out there, and they lack the same brand name recognition that Nikon and Canon and other brands have. So it often makes them very affordable. Now, one thing you wanna look out for when you're shopping for M42 lenses is that there is a big variance in quality. Not all of these lenses are created equal. But if you do your research and you shop around, you can easily get some high quality lenses for around 20 to $50. And you'll never pay more than $100 for anything but the rarest M42 lenses, like the Helios 40-2 85 millimeter lens. So let's talk about specific M42 lenses. In this video, I'm gonna show you six different lenses that you can add to your kit. For starters, let's talk about auto Shenon lenses. Now, when it comes to getting the most bang for your buck, auto Shenon lenses are the way to go. Most of them are around 20 to 50 US dollars. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the 55 millimeter F1.7. Now, the average retail for these lenses used is around 20 to $65. So if you're looking for a really budget-friendly portrait lens for your camera, this is a good option to go for. Now, it's not the sharpest lens in the world, especially when you're shooting wide open. This is very common with vintage lenses that didn't have the same modern lens coating that we have today. Now, this lens is very sharp, though, if you're shooting from about f2.8 to f5.6. The lens also has a very smooth and creamy bokeh quality to it when you are shooting wide open. So if you do like that kind of aesthetic, this can be a great lens for you. So our second lens is going to be the Auto Shenon 35mm f2.8. Now this is one of the cheaper lenses in the lineup. The average retail for this is around 10 to 35 US dollars. So if you're looking for a really budget friendly 35mm lens, this is a good one to look at. Again, this isn't the sharpest lens, especially when you're shooting wide open, but you'll get the sharpest results around f4. Now is this the most fantastic vintage lens out there on the market? Of course not but it's only $20, so you're getting a really decent lens for a great price. The third lens on our list is the Pentax Super Tacumar 50mm f1.4 lens. Now this, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated vintage lenses out there. This was the kit lens on the Pentax Spotmatic camera, which if you're interested in shooting film photography or getting into that, that's a good camera to start out with. Now the average retail for this lens is about 50 to 75 US dollars. And honestly, that's the price you'll pay if you're getting a Pentax Spotmatic camera with this lens. So it's often easier just to buy the camera with the lens than to buy the lens on its own. So Pentax made about four different versions of this lens before they switched over to the K-mount in 1975. Now you can get some really great portraits with this and some really good bokeh as well at f1.4. And the reason for this is probably because of all the thorium. So one thing to note about these lenses is that they were manufactured using thorium, which is a radioactive material. There's a lot of articles out there and competing opinions about whether using radioactive lenses is harmful to your health or how much radioactivity you actually get from these lenses. And apparently this lens is one of the most radioactive lenses out there. Hmm. How powerful and radioactively dangerous is this lens? You know, it's only emitting alpha radiation, which can be uh, stopped by a piece of paper. Um, no, I don't think you know what uh, thorium isotopes are. <laughs> All those people that told me that the, those thorium-doped lenses are only emitting um, non-dangerous alpha radiation? You're wrong. So I'm not a doctor or a nuclear physicist, and I don't know if owning one of these lenses is going to be harmful to your health or not. I just know that you're gonna get some really good image quality out of it if you do shoot with it. So the fourth lens on our list is the Helios 44-2 
58 millimeter f2 lens. Now this lens is famous for the swirly bokeh that you can get out of it. So there are lots of reviews on this lens and lots of sample images out there, so I won't go on and on about it. If you do wanna see a full review of the lens, I highly recommend Addy Torrent from Old Cameras and his review on the Helios 44-2. The average retail for this lens is about 40 to 60 US dollars. Now the Helios lens was used on old Eastern European cameras, so if you're shopping for them online, they're kind of hard to find in places like the US and you often have to buy them internationally from places like Eastern Europe. So be careful with what you're shopping around for. There are some scams out there and there are some sketchy camera dealers. So you never know what you're really getting yourself into. For instance, when I bought this lens, I thought I was buying it from New Jersey, but it turns out that the eBay buyer was actually shipping it from Russia and it came in like a really shitty packaging and it was just a miracle that the lens didn't break. Luckily, Helios lenses are built really well, so there was no damage in the shipping process, and I was able to take some pretty cool images with it. Now, the Helios lens is great if you wanna take dreamy images, but it's not so great if you want really sharp image quality. You're really not gonna get that out of this kind of lens. But if you do wanna have some of the best of both worlds in terms of sharpness and swirly bokeh, I recommend checking out the Helios 44-4 lens, which is a later version of this same lens. All right, so we got two more lenses to go. The fifth lens on our list is the Etna Rokunar 28 mm f2.8 macro lens. When I was doing research for this video, it was difficult to find any information on this lens. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of them for sale on the market, so I couldn't really find any information about average retail price or even manufacturing information. So this is a good example of the kind of the weird and niche lenses that you can find with the M42 mount. So if you are looking for a cheap macro lens, this could be a very good option for you. Now, when I was searching for this lens, I also found a Sirius 28 millimeter F2.8 macro lens and a Sears rebrand 28 millimeter F2.8 macro lens. So it seems like there are a few different versions of this lens or possibly some different rebranding along the same lines. So the final lens on this list is the Pentacon 135 millimeter F2.8. Now the average retail for this one is a little bit pricier. It's around 100 to 150 dollars. But if you're looking for a good budget friendly telephoto lens, this can be a great option for you. This is great too because there aren't that many telephoto lenses for the A6000 in general. So it is good to look for vintage lenses if you wanna have a telephoto lens for your A6000. So if you're really interested in using M42 lenses on your A6000 or other mirrorless camera, here are some tips for shopping and shooting with these lenses. So first off, all of these are gonna be used lenses. So the best places to shop for them are on websites like eBay or KEH.com. You can also find vintage lenses like this at estate sales, yard sales, flea markets, and some camera stores will also carry M42 lenses as well. Now, if you're looking, look for brands like Super Tacumar, Tokina, Auto Chinon. Now, always look at sample reviews and images before you buy a lens, because like I said, there's a huge variance of quality, even amongst more commonly known brand names with the M42 lens mount. Also, before you're shooting with these lenses, set your expectations properly you're not gonna get as good of results as you would out of a modern lens or a native lens for the A6000. But these are budget-friendly lenses that you can try out and have a lot of fun with. Also, you will need an adapter to mount the lens on your particular camera. So for the A6000, I recommend the Photodiox M42 to Sony NEX adapter, which I'll link up in the description. I also put some links in the description to where you can shop for these particular lenses on eBay or KEH. Now, when you're shooting with this lens, be sure to use manual focus assist and focus peaking to help you get the sharpest images possible. And yeah, that's pretty much it on M42 lenses. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like these videos, please be sure to subscribe to Dan Bowen Photography for more gear reviews and portrait photography tutorials. We'll see you soon, folks. This has been another episode of Dan Bowen Photography. Peace. Hey, before you go watch another video, I just wanted to let you know about this free guide that I put together. Now, if you're struggling to pick the right lens for your Sony a6000, I created the free 
Sony A6000 Lens Picker Guide. Now you can get this PDF download completely free when you sign up to my email newsletter. I put a link in the description where you can sign up and get this free PDF that shows you how to pick the right lens for your budget and what type of content that you shoot. So check out the link in the description box, put in your email address, and you'll get that sent straight to your inbox.